Once he picked up his new truck, he then realized it would not fit comfortably into his parking spot. He reached out to see if he could return it. He could be fined $50,000 and be banned from buying Teslas in the future. No! Cybertruck! Recently, the Cybertruck has been making a lot of hubbub on the interwebs. I don't know if you guys have seen a Cybertruck IRL, but I have, and honestly, they look ridiculous, dude. They're super long. They look like a low poly version of a pickup truck. Like, it just doesn't look right. Something looks off to me. But recently, a customer is being threatened with a $50,000 fine for trying to return his Cybertruck after realizing it just wasn't for him, dude. This is ridiculous. So we're gonna jump right into this story. It's gonna be a little quick one. I saw this news headline, and I want to dive into the story, sink my teeth in, just because it seems like an outrageous thing for, for Tesla to wind up doing, bro. So without further ado, let's jump right in. The article is called, Tesla threatens customer with $50,000 fine if he tries to sell his Cybertruck that doesn't fit in his new parking spot. When he reserved the truck, he had a house, but when he got the truck, he had an apartment. A little ominous, bro, but it sets the scene. It answers a question. I was initially gonna say, if you're spending like, $100,000 on a truck. You would imagine that you'd have the proper amenities, you know what I mean? Like a charging port, a garage. Apparently, life changed for my man. And I, I get that, you know, things change. It's not always how you plan it. Let's dig into this article and get his full story and just see what's really going on in the Tesla realm. The Tesla Cybertruck is unlike most trucks that have come before it, and thus it has attracted a new set of buyers who normally wouldn't drive pickup trucks, dude. I mean. Honestly, it makes sense. You know, you got your freaking, you got your tech bros out there. They're like, mm -hmm, load up the lumber, Jimbo. Let's go. Owning a dr and driving a truck that's over 18 feet long and nearly eight feet wide and built like a Frigidaire isn't for the faint of heart. As one Salt Lake City man recently found out who tried to negotiate a way to get rid of his cyber truck. I mean, 18 feet long, like just to put it in perspective, it's not the longest, uh, pickup truck that's out there. If you get like a heavy duty work pickup truck that has like a full eight foot bed and then like, you know, four doors or something, that thing is gonna be 20 feet long, dude, straight up. It's like 22 feet long. I did the math earlier. So maybe he's gotta suck it up a little bit. I don't know. Maybe he's being a little bit of a, of a little softy out here. All right, sorry, buddy. Yeah, you bought a cyber truck. It's time to play with the big boys, okay? Let's see what he's gotta say. Blaine Radden reserved the cyber truck after after watching the vehicles launch online. But since he ordered the truck, his living situation has changed. He and his wife separated and he moved from a home with a garage into an apartment complex with a tight parking slot. Once he picked up his new truck, he then realized it would not fit comfortably into his parking spot. He reached out to the dealer that delivered his truck to see if he could return it. The manager told Radden that his situation wouldn't likely warrant an unforeseen circumstance that would trigger Tesla's repurchase of the truck and reminded him that he signed a Tesla vehicle order agreement, which states if the Cybertruck owner sells the EV during the first year, that he can be fined $50,000 and be banned from buying Teslas in the future, according to Business Insider. Now, it makes sense, you know, companies, they put out the, this type of stuff so that you don't have people buying a ton of items and then flooding the aftermarket with overpriced vehicles, Rolexes. Rolex is a company that does it quite often. But my man's not really trying to do that. He's just trying to return the vehicle. There's no like, there's, what, what does this mean? What is this verbiage here? It would not trigger Tesla's, the unforeseen circumstances that would trigger Tesla's repurchase of the truck. Like the dude got the truck, brought it home. He was like, this thing ain't fitting, bro. It's sticking out a good six feet of the 18 feet. We gotta return this truck. And they're like, nah. We can't return it. It's not like, you know, somebody's not gonna buy it immediately. The truck is virtually brand new, right? You would imagine. So let's read on. Making me keep the truck that does not fit my circumstances appears to be unfair and not at all the spirit of the no sale language in the contract, he added. Radden told BI, 
business insider that he's a rule follower and he doesn't plan on going against Tesla's verdict on the matter or hire a lawyer to dispute the decision. He also said his building is okay with him keeping the vehicle there, but they won't be held liable if the truck gets damaged by another car while protruding from the parking spot. I mean, I think people are gonna not try to hit your cyber truck, bro. That is going to be a pricey hit on your insurance if you do. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. If you see a cyber truck sticking out a little bit, do not hit it, bro. Be very mindful. And the guy sounds like a softball, bro. What are we talking about here? I'm not going to go against the rules. They'd be like, Tesla, take this thing back. I want the Model X now. A week after sending his longer note to Tesla in an attempt to appeal the decision, Radden said he's still waiting for a response. So you got Tesla out here pretty much like locking him into the situation. It's kind of weird from a car dealer, in my opinion, to be like, we're not taking this back, period. Like that is a hundred thousand dollars right there, bro. Just because he signed on like at the initial launch date, if anything, I would give them that person even more leniency because it's like, yeah, you put the money in, we were able to manufacture these cars and you didn't like it, return it. It's fine, you're one of the founders, bro. Like essentially, you know what I mean? Give the guy the right. So I got the uh, the agreement thing and I just wanna read exactly what it's talking about here. Let's dive in, see if the, like what the unforeseen circumstances really could be. Maybe it does fall under it, bro. So here we have the Tesla Motor Vehicle Order Agreement. Straight from Tesla themselves, baby. Let's see, agreement of purchase, price, order, process, cancellation, and changes. All right, after you submit your or your completed order, we will begin the process of preparing and coordinating your vehicle delivery. At this point, you agree that any paid order fees, order deposit, and transportation fees have been earned. If you cancel your order or breach this agreement and we cancel your order, you agree that we may retain as liquidated damages the order fee order deposit and transportation fee to the extent not otherwise prohibited by law so that makes sense you know you, you cancel the order they keep the fees even if you wanted to return the vehicle why couldn't you just keep they keep the fees and then they get a whole vehicle back they give him the rest of the money like you know what i mean it's a huge business you guys can handle it come on bro my poor guy he every night he goes to bed and he's scared just thinking about that extra four feet that's sticking out of his parking spot um, you acknowledge that the order fee, order deposit, and transportation fee are a fair and reasonable estimate of the actual damages we have incurred or may incur in transportation, remarketing, and reselling the vehicle. You acknowledge that the order fee, order deposit, and transportation fee are a fair and reasonable estimate of the actual damages we have incurred or may incur in transporting, remarketing, and reselling the vehicle. Costs which are impracticable or extremely difficult to determine. All right, so if anything, it sounds like right there in that clause, like I get that that's for cancellation maybe before the, the item is delivered, but they're literally saying that they are, they are in the business of remarketing and reselling the vehicle. So why not allow a return? I'm so confused by like all of this. Maybe it's just the representative that he spoke to, the guy, maybe it was like a Friday night, you know, we're getting close to that like 5 p.m. mark. It was like 4.45. The dude called, he's like, bro, my vehicle is sticking out, dude. I'm scared, I need to return this, bro, please. He's like, ah, oh, this paperwork's gonna take all evening. Uh, you know, buddy, we don't do returns here at Tesla. Elon Musk said, he, he had a press conference with us today and he said, we're done with all that. So I don't know. Also, did the guy not dive into the, the, the agreement? Like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Let's read on though. If you make changes to your order, you may be subject to potential price increases or any pricing as, uh, adjustments made since your original order date. Any changes made by you to your vehicle configuration, including change to delivery location or estimated delivery date will be reflected in the subsequent vehicle configuration that will form part of this agreement. The order fee, order deposit, transportation fee, and this agreement are not made or entered into an anticipation or of 
or pending any conditional sale contract. Okay, so that's that part. Delivery, title transfer, agreement to arbitrate, connectivity, obsolete hardware, and future firmware updates, privacy policy, blah, 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 warranty. You will receive access to Tesla's new vehicle limited warranty. All right, that doesn't really fall into it. Now here's the no resellers uh, part and cancellation. No resellers, discontinuation, and cancellation. Tesla and its affiliates sells cars directly to end customers and we may unilaterally cancel any order that we believe has been made with a view towards resale of the vehicle or that has otherwise been made in bad faith and we'll keep the order fee, order deposit, and transportation fee. This includes orders of which a third party is facilitating or brokering the sale, or if the vehicles are to be exported to somewhere other than where you tell us will uh, you will be registering the vehicle. We may also cancel your order and refund your order fee, order deposit, and transportation fee if we discontinue a product. Future or option, uh, feature or option after the time you place your order. We work to fulfill your orders as quickly as we can. If we, if you become unresponsive to us or fail to complete a request action, a requested action to progress towards delivery of your vehicle, we may cancel your order and keep your order fee, order deposit and transportation fee. Alternatively, Tesla may give you the option to reconfigure your vehicle at the current pricing. All right, so that's all for the reseller. I didn't know it was that strict actually. They will not deliver the item if you're not like registering it there. What if you live at a different address, bro? There's gotta be like some loopholes throughout that. And I can imagine that Tesla is really reaping the benefits of keeping a lot of fees. I can only imagine how many uh, Tesla orders wind up getting canceled because they go against this agreement. But you know, whatever. And that's pretty much the end of the statement. So it sounds to me like that my man should totally be able to return his Cybertruck. I mean, it's a huge investment and it's not like Tesla's gonna have problems reselling and remarketing, something that they clearly already offer and anticipate doing on some orders that fall through. So. That's gonna be it for today's video, guys. What do you think about this? If you drop that chunk of change on a cyber truck and you just figured, hey, this thing is not for me, dog. Wouldn't you like the option to return it? I mean, like, what are we talking about here, guys? Just let me know down below. Uh, if you like these types of videos, we post three times a week. So get into the loop. You're gonna want to. It's gonna become a part of your weekly schedule, dude. So just integrate in, brother. Otherwise, if you have something that you guys want me to react to, you could totally send me a DM on Instagram at the Peeblar. Send it my way and uh, you know, if I think it's gonna be dope, we're gonna check it out. Otherwise guys, that's gonna be it for me today. I am your boy Peeblar. It's been real, be well and peace.